you guys can have your fun. All right, good morning and good afternoon and good evening for some people from all over the place that uh, uh, come and listen to our lecture today. Uh, today, I uh, just want to introduce myself. My name is Jimmy Wong. I represent the Wuhan Tai Chi pretty much in America and some countries. And today we're going to talk about uh, the Tai Chi roots and talk about some intrinsic value uh, of Tai Chi. Why Tai Chi is a better exercise, in my opinion, that's better than other things that I could think of. All right. Uh, before I do that, let me introduce myself a little bit more for some of you who are new here. Uh, what I do and who am I? Why did I come to America? You know, so anyway, I started uh, at a very young age uh, learning Chinese Kung Fu in Malaysia. Uh, my parents are from China. They migrated over to Malaysia back, way back during the Second World War. And so I just happened to be born there, you know. My uh, family is uh, very into uh, the cultural aspect of the Chinese way of life. Uh, so Kung Fu or martial art is one of them. Uh, my father uh, always wanted us to learn Chinese martial arts, but he never had time to have my uncle to teach us because everybody was busy trying to make a living. But my brother did, my older brother did. My older brother did. Yeah, my older brother did. So um, I learned from my older brother when I was a little boy. Of course, you know, brothers learning from each other doesn't work, you know. And uh, he's a pain in the butt. You know, he made me do the whole stance for a long time. And by the way, I'm the youngest in the family. We have seven in the family. So I'm a spoiled child, so as to say. Mom loved me so much that make sure I don't suffer. I was born uh, pretty late. My mom was in her... My mom was between 44 and 45 when she gave birth to me. So it's very unusual that I survive, you know. So, so they worry about me. So they want to make sure that I, I keep myself healthy. So my brother was teaching me. And, uh, of course, uh, he doesn't teach me as much uh, because he work a lot. He work out of town. Sometimes he work out of state. So he come home maybe two or three times a year. So he teach the same old thing, you know. So it gets pretty boring. So my parents decided to send me to a very famous school called Qingwu, which is our founder. Qingwu is 110 years old today in China. Uh, the organizer of Qingwu 100 years ago sent three famous people from China to Malaysia to teach. So Malaysia Qingwu is about 100 years old. So it's that old, it's older than us, you know. So anyway, so um, uh, then, uh, I learned from my brother, uh, and I learned from the Ching Wu school in Malaysia. Then I, my parents were worrying about me because they want me to have a college education. I was the youngest in the family, so they want to see an engineer in the family. So they sent me to America. So that's why I'm here. So I hate school. I always do. But enjoy, I enjoy my time in school. Don't get me wrong. You know, uh, I have fun. And uh and one day I was uh, invited to uh, do a presentation about Malaysia. And uh, I couldn't come up with anything except Chinese Kung Fu. So I performed in the school. And after the performance, the, the people in the school, they like it. And they asked me to teach at the continuing education. So I did. So that's how we started this whole thing, you know. And then I graduated from college. I got a job just like everybody else. I worked for Texas Instrument. Everybody know Texas Instrument in Dallas? I was in Houston. And, uh, and I started a club there at the University of Houston, a Shaolin Kung Fu club. And then I moved to Dallas. I got married in Dallas. I moved to Dallas. And I think I was married only for three weeks. And I got a very serious car accident. I think it was 1985. Michael Jackson came to Dallas. That was the day I have a car accident. Everybody was partying, everybody was drinking, and this guy ran to a red light, and I hit him, you know. My car was total. I have a brand new uh, Toyota. It turned into uh, almost half of what the size was. 
during the accident. I was pronounced gone. But somehow, the guy up there did not want me to leave yet. So, uh, and then the police touched me and I wake up. I couldn't speak. I can only blink my eyes, so I have to answer those questions. Anyway, um, and then I met, at that time, I met my business partner, who is also my Tai Chi teacher, young style Tai Chi teacher. We're going to talk about him over here. Uh, we wanted to start something in Dallas. Uh, we're going to have Shaolin Kung Fu and Tai Chi. So he's a young style Tai Chi teacher. And now I have this accident. Great, right? So he told me, hey, maybe you should start doing Tai Chi, be more serious about it. And I did. And I recovered in two weeks. I could not believe it. So I become a strong believer in Tai Chi. Before I thought, oh, Tai Chi is for old people. I'm still young. It's 1985. Man, I'm getting old now. <laughs> so anyway, so I thought uh, that was cool. So I decided to spend a lot of time with it. And I really enjoy it. And I decided to practice it very seriously. You know, and then after working 10 years in the corporate world, I hated it. I wanted to study medicine. I always wanted to study traditional Chinese medicine. There were no school in uh, Texas. So the first school started in Austin, you know, in Austin, the traditional Chinese medicine college. And uh, I live in Dallas. That's a three and a half hour drive, a three hours drive. And the class just happened to be on the weekend. It just started with five people in the school. So I drove there every weekend. This is crazy. For three and a half, four years. You know, I went through that. And then after that, I finished my school there and I don't feel comfortable with what I'm learning. I decided to go to China to further my clinical practice over there. So in 1991, I went to, no, actually in 19, 1991? Yeah, 1991. I went to Beijing to study at the traditional uh, Chinese medicine school there. And that's where I met my teacher, Wun Han. I was looking for Wuhao Tai Chi, honestly, because I read a lot about it. I was recommended by some of my senior friends that talk about Wuhao Tai Chi. So I was curious because there's a lot of theory behind it. So I found this man to a recommendation of someone else. At the same time, I also found the Chen Sao Tai Chi teacher there recommend them as somebody else. Okay, so that's it. That's my story. Uh, so let's talk about the lineage today. Uh, lots of people uh, think Tai Chi is just a bunch of old men or old ladies practicing exercise in the park. That's how it got started in China nowadays. You see it all over the place in China, even in America, especially in Houston. You'd be surprised in Houston, in the mall, shopping mall, people practice Tai Chi there now. Outside the mall and inside the mall back then. I mean, it's pandemic time now. Back then, I have a lot of friends that teach Tai Chi. They practice inside the mall. And some of them practice outside the mall. Early in the morning, before the sunrise, people go there and practice the Tai Chi. So Tai Chi has become very popular. All right. So the story, there are many stories about how Tai Chi got started, who started it, why it got started, that kind of stuff. Uh, stories is story. One of the famous stories, it's... 1391, a very famous Taoist master from the Wudang Mountain. Wudang Mountain is one of the five sacred mountains in China. Uh, uh, we went there. Did you go there, Stone? Uh, no, he didn't. So we had a few students that went there with me up there. Uh, very famous martial arts mountain, so as to say. So these are Taoist people, and his name is Zhang Sangfeng. Uh, it was a belief system that he started Tai Chi. Uh, and some people said that he saw the crane and the snake was fighting and all that. And, and he created these uh, movements called Tai Chi. You know? So that's in 1391. Uh, and then later, history goes and no more information. And then this person, Wang Zhongye, He's a very famous uh, master. He's not, a, I don't think he's a Taoist, but I'm not sure who he is. Uh, Wang Zhong Wang. Same as last name as I am. Somehow, I'm not sure I'm related to him. I doubt it. But um, he formulated uh, lots of Tai Chi theory. One of the earliest Tai Chi philosophy or theory or sutra, whatever you want to call it, the name, uh, is the Wang Zhong classical theory of Tai Chi. You talk about it. And a lot of uh, Tai Chi system use that. So from there, he passes art to 
JF called Jiang Fa. I'm making every, everything abbreviated because this board is small, so we can't uh, put everything in here. So Jiang Fa traveled to this village called Chen Village. He went to Chen Village and uh, he taught them some movement. In Chen Village, they have their own martial art. Long time ago in China, every village just practiced their art. Uh, so it's a say, secret art for the village. They won't teach it to someone else, only to the people that live in the village. So this village is a Chen village. So Zhang Fa went over there and taught them some version of a Tai Chi. Uh, at that time, Chen village called themselves Chen Boxing. They don't call it Chen Tai Chi. They call it Chen Boxing or Chen, Chen Martial Art. It's last name Chen. So he went down to uh, many generation of Chen uh, teacher, which I'm not going to list them. I'm just going to list some of the important ones. And then he passed the art to Chen Zhangxing. He's a 14th generation, 1771. That's the record that they really have recorded. So 1771, right now it's 2021. How many years was that? 200 over years, right? American independence was 1776, right? So it's only five years before American independence. So it's pretty new uh, that it's formulated, you know. So, so from there, he passed the art to the 15th, 16th generation. The 17th generation is Chen Fakke. Chen Fakke is a very famous master in Beijing. Uh, he was from Chen village. He got offered to go to Beijing. So he went to Beijing and taught to many, many uh, accomplished masters of other style that decided to learn from him. There are many of them uh, in Beijing. Uh, you can Google the information on YouTube. One of them is Tian Xiu Chen, Lei Mu Ni, uh, Wang, uh, Feng Zi Chang, etc., etc., many people. But one of his students' name is called Li Zhongyin. Okay, as I told you, 1991, I went to Beijing. I met him, and he taught me. Uh, it was for a short while. I was there for about six months in Beijing that time, about five to six months during that time. So I was pretty lucky to be able to study with him. Uh, he was teaching in a park. Uh, at first he refused to teach me because he doesn't know who I am. They don't teach strangers, you know. It's not about, hey, I pay you tuition and come and learn. It doesn't work that way. It has to be recommended by Mike Wade, for example. Mike Wade is a good friend of him, and Mike will recommend me to go and learn from him, or Mike will write a letter to him. Back then there's no iPhone, by the way, 1985, 9, 1991. So Mike will write a letter to him and say, that, hey, this guy's crazy guy's coming over to learn from you, teach him, he's my friend, so on and so forth. So I was able to study with him. During the same time, I met Wun Han. So anyway, I want to go down here to talk about the Yang style Tai Chi. Yang style Tai Chi, the founder is Yang Lu Chan. Yang Lu Chan is the first generation of Yang style Tai Chi. He studied from Chen Changxing also. But they, these forms are a little bit different, which I get into detail later with you guys. So Yang Lu Chan taught the art to two of his sons, Yang Jian Hao and Yang Ban Hao. You can see the date, 1842, 1837 to 1892. And then from here, Yang Jian Hao uh, have two sons here uh, that he taught to, which is uh, documented, Yang Sao Hao and Yang Chen Fu. Okay. And the most famous one in the Yang style, currently everybody talk about, is Yang Chen Fu. He was the one that really spread the art. The person that do the work of spreading the art is very important to, in the lineage because they're the one who's responsible for throwing out there for people to learn. So Yang Chen Fu was 1883 to 1936. I don't think any one of us are born during that time. And he taught to many people. He taught to his sons. Uh, one of his oldest sons is Yang Sao Chung. Uh, he went to Hong Kong to teach. So the Yang Star Tai Chi spread to Hong Kong. Uh, he also taught to this very famous person called Tong Yin Jie. He also taught in Hong Kong. Uh, he was very famous in Hong Kong because there was a challenge fight. Uh, not a challenge fight. There was, there was somebody else. But he demonstrated in the challenge fight. And then uh, Yang Chengfu also taught to another person called Liu Dianchen. Not a very popular one. A lot of people doesn't know him. But he's one of the last few disciples uh, that Liu Jiancheng learned from him. And then Wang Zihe learned from him. 
Then Wang Zhe migrated to Taiwan. And Wang Zhe teach to Du Chongxing, which is my uh, Tai Chi partner. Uh, we started a school together and I decided to learn Tai Chi from him because I have a car accident. Remember I told you guys, okay. And uh, this is in 1985. So I learned from him. So, okay. So that's the young style Tai Chi part. Uh, let's talk about the Wuhal style Tai Chi. The Wuhal style Tai Chi is uh, what I want to focus on. So you know who you are, what you are, and why I emphasize on it. Okay. Then Jiang Fa came to teach in the Chen village. He teach to this person called Chen Yuben. And then he taught it to Chen Qingping. Okay. Uh, now, there's Chen style here and Chen style here. What's the difference? That's a big frame Chen style. This is a small frame Chen style. Okay. Now you see how Wu Hao style is small frame. See that? So he taught to this guy, Chen Qingping. And then Wu Yuxiang, which is our founder. So it's the first generation. Uh, in China, at that time, they call it Wu style Tai Chi. There's another Wu style is kind of confusing to a lot of people. So I decided to use the Wu Hao because Mr. Hao, as I see, I put a bracket here. He's the main person to spread the art, actually. So I want to give him some credibility for spreading the art. And there are a lot of famous people studied from him. So anyway, so Wu Yuxiang taught. Uh, Wu Yuxiang is a, is a very accomplished martial artist himself. And he's a good friend of Yang Wuchan, you know, as Mike and Keith together. And you'll beat each other up all the time, having fun, exchanging knowledge, that kind of stuff. And the story goes that Wu Yuxiang tell Yang Wuchan to go to Chen Village to learn, gave him some money to offer him some money. And Yang Wuchan worked for Wu Yuxiang's uncle. Uh, Wu Yuxiang come from a very rich family, a very royal family. All the families are uh, ministers. When you work for the government, you're somebody back then, very important people. And uh, if you become a minister, you have to be very accomplished beside education and martial art, both of them. And Wu Yuxiang actually qualified to be one. He doesn't want to be. He's just interested in martial art. So he never go to the magistrate court to work. So he decides to teach Tai Chi for himself to, uh, to research into it. And he wrote many, many theories. A lot of Tai Chi theory today all come from him. Okay? And a lot of people use his theory. It's just a general theory, not just Wu Hao. But he also put a lot on Wu Hao style Tai Chi. Then he talked to his nephew called Li Yu. He's another crazy guy, his nephew, so they're coming from a rich family, a royal family again. So they both studied together. He taught him the art and they formulate the art together and then taught him the art and they practiced for the next nine years in the, in the, in the, in the home. And you no, know, these guys don't work. There's no iPhone, there's no newspaper, they don't work. They train all day long, they make their wife work hard for them. <laughs> you have servants and everything. So they train for nine years and formulate many, many, many theories. Especially Li Yu formulate the push hands, the application and that kind of stuff. So a lot of information is gathered during the time. And that's very, very important because it's all written. You know, and you can Google that information today. It's out there somewhere. And then you, you can see they only talk to one person. Can you imagine the person is gone, the art is finished? You know, so he taught the Hao Chen. During that time when Wu Yuxiang was teaching Li Yu, he also taught to Yang Pan Hao, which is the son of Yang Luchan. As I told you, Yang Luchan and Wu Yuxiang are friends, very good friends. So, so you are Yang Luchan, you are Wu Yuxiang. You're good friends. You have a son called Yang Pan Hao. And you went to Beijing to teach Tai Chi. So you send your son to Mike Wade and say, hey, take care of my son for me. So Mike thought, hey, this is cool. These kids love martial art. Uh, he's supposed to get education from Wu Yuxiang teaching him the Confucianism, that kind of stuff. But young Wu Yuxiang decided to teach him some Tai Chi. So his style of the young style is called the small frame. You see how it relates the small frame coming? He got influenced by the small frame Tai Chi. So anyway, so, uh, so Li Yu taught to Hao Weichun. Hao Weichun worked for the, the Wu family, you know, they work in a family, you know, like a servant in a family. So they taught it to him. He was the one who was responsible to teach to many, many, many people today. I mean, during that time. Many, many famous people. Okay. One of the famous students that he had, or friend that he had, 
It's called Sun Lutong. Sun Lutong is the Sun style Tai Chi. You probably heard about that. Sun Lutong is a very accomplished Xing Yi and Bagua teacher. Very famous, very good, you know. But he still wanted to learn Tai Chi. So he went to Hao Chen to learn from him in Beijing when Hao Weichun went to visit Beijing. And I heard he trained, he taught him for maybe two weeks or a month or something like that. But because he was so accomplished teacher, he's able to learn the art and formulate it and create the Sun style Tai Chi. And then uh, Hao Weichun also taught many, many people. I'm just gonna say a few important people. Li Shen Yuan is another one, very important I wanna talk about. He taught to Dong Yinjie. Dong Yinjie, uh, everybody in America, or everybody in the world thinks Dong Yinjie is Yang style Tai Chi, which is true because he started from Yang Chen Fu. But his original art that he learned when he was younger was from Li Sun Yuan of the student Hao Wei Chen. So Dong Yinjie has a small frame Tai Chi. It was Hao style Tai Chi, or Wu Hao style Tai Chi, okay? So that's how it relates to here. Uh, for those who are on YouTube uh, uh, watching this, and if you have studied Yang style Tai Chi, uh, now this is some information for you. Then from here, uh, Hao Weichun also taught to a uh, uh, student, Li Sun Tuan. Li Sun Tuan is my grandmaster. I want to talk a little bit about him. Uh, he is also a very accomplished uh, martial artist. Uh, he is a Chinese Muslim. Uh, Chinese Muslims have their own martial arts called Cha Quan, Cha Quan, and, and Xin Yi Quan, another kind of martial art. So he already a very accomplished, and he's a businessman. He got you know, enough money to, 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 to do a lot of things, uh, to hire people to work for him. So he had time, and he liked to promote Chinese martial arts. So he invited Hao Wei Chen to live with him in a village called Xing Tai. Went over there to live with him. I mean, when the teacher come to you, it's not like you're paying tuition. You take care of him. You, you give him a house to live. You take care of his family, his kids, whoever come, the whole family come together. And you take care of him. And his job is to just teach you. So he taught uh, to, to him here. And of course, taught to all the students. Lee Sun Duan uh, taught to, again, many, many students. Uh, there's two important people I want to talk about. It's Chen Guan. He's also a Chinese Muslim, uh, and also Wun Han. He's not a Chinese Muslim, okay? So they learn from him. And I learned from Wun Han when I went to Beijing. That's how I, uh, that's how my lineage is. And then Wun Han also took me to his village called Xing Tai. And uh, in 1992, he took me there. I went back again to see Wun Han for another six months. So I went there. And that village was not uh, formally open to any foreigners to come in. And I carry a U.S. passport, and I get on the train, and I got off the train. They know I was coming. The police had to come and get me. Why, what are you doing here? I said, I come here to study from this famous man. He's very famous there. He said, really? Okay. Uh, you, I said, where are you going to stay? I said, I'm going to stay with him. No, 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 you're not going to stay with him. You're going to stay in a hotel. I said, no, I don't want to stay in a hotel. No, no, it's free. You stay in the hotel. We have to protect you. If something happened to you, we're responsible. You know. I said, no, I'm going to stay with this teacher. You know. I said, okay, if you want to stay with him, fine. Uh, if you need security, why don't you send two policemen to come and walk, look after me? So they did. But I kind of regret it, and I'm not regretting it, because there's no water there. It's cold. So I didn't take a shower for two weeks. <laughs> there's no water. So uh, And there's no toilet paper. There's no toilet there. Everybody squat on the drain. And they can only afford newspaper to wipe your to wipe your butt. <laughs> so I say, don't you have toilet paper? He said, no, we we can't afford it. It's so poor. I say, you're lucky you got newspaper. Otherwise, you have to use leaves. You know. <laughs> so they were joking with me. I said, okay, I'm fine. You know. So anyway, so that's that's just my story. So basically, what I want to say is, uh, these are the roots. So you know where you are. That kind of stuff. These are cool people. These people. Uh, because of them, uh, we exist today, you know. There are many, many teachers that study from different lineage. They travel around the world. They went to Asian country. They went to Europe. They came to America, so they brought the art here. So this lineage will continue, you know. So uh, it's important that 
uh, we learn from reputable teacher. Uh, but just because the teacher have a lineage doesn't mean he's great, not necessarily. Uh, if you study from a teacher who have a lineage and he's good at what he's teaching, that's a perfect thing, you know, so that kind of stuff. So these are the cool, cool masters. So it's a cool teacher, cool lineage. Uh, I call him the gang of Tai Chi, you know. <laughs> these are the gang of the Tai Chi people. Is that spelled correctly? Yeah. Okay. And uh, because of, uh, you know, there's a, I call them a gang because they're all together. Like people like to use the word gang nowadays, you know, but not in terms of bad way, you know, in a good way. So what I, what I decided now is uh, that idea came to me. I said, what can I do to help the people, uh, my people, to understand a lot of things? Uh, not just Wuhan Tai Chi, but Tai Chi that I have learned. So you have a knowledge of it. So I came up with a name called uh, Tai Chi Gang.com. So I created it. So I will create a group. I would create a server so you guys can actually go in there and see all this information that I post on there in the future. That's the plan. Uh, by the way, for those who are watching on YouTube, hello. Uh, if, you, if you miss us earlier, no problem. You can watch it later. Uh, let us know who you are, where you're from, and what style do you do. And please give us some recommendation uh, what we can do in the future. We plan to do this kind of uh, lecture a little bit more uh, sometime over the years as we are uh, some country are still in lockdown, so that's what we, we, we're going to do. Okay, today uh, we're going to talk about Tai Chi. Uh, what is Tai Chi? Tai Chi means yin and yang symbol. Everybody know yin and yang symbol. From nothing to something. So nothing means nothing happens. As soon as something happens or there's an action that's executed, there's yin and yang. That means there's firmness and there's softness. If you think about it, yin and yang represent men and women. A woman and man. Yin is woman, man is yang. So that's why I say, oh, God created Adam and Eve. So that's yin and yang. It's very simple. You know? So Tai Chi is philosophy. A lot of it is used by a thousand. A thousand like to use that because they talk about harmony, they talk about balance. They talk about how we can harmonize ourselves by balancing each other. Okay? So that's what it is. So in our Tai movement, you can see there's a lot of firm movement, there's a lot of soft movement. They all move together. Okay? So like I told you, from nothing to something. So from nothing means zero. To something. For something to happen in our human body, think about it. We have to use our mind, correct? Right? If you are vegetated, your mind is not working, you cannot do movement. Oh, Sifu. Uh, change out the mic. Uh, Some of the people say the mic are not working. It's not working at all? Uh, someone just commented it's not functioning. Wow. They say it's connected? Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Is it clear? That sound? Okay. Uh, so anyway, so, um, so uh, where am I? So from the mind that send the signal to the body physically, and then you move. So the mind is the yin. The physical body is the yang. So in our body, there's yin and yang. So the mind means, I came up with some crazy idea. We represent our emotions, right? Our minds are emotions. All the emotion think of our mind. And then our physical body is the mechanical work. So I, I thought, hey, this is emotional intelligence, so as to say. And then we have artificial intelligence. We put it together, I call it Tai Chi intelligence. You know, it's just a funny thing, you know, so I thought. Um, because every action that we do, anytime, 
it's involved with the mind. The mind has to tell what to do, but it went through the nervous system. It went so fast that we never thought about it. But if you start thinking about it and actually move or actually talk with the mind, then your statement come out even better or your things will come out even better. Some people have some uh, indigestion. Uh, um, you can invite him to come in. Again. You can come in and sit down. Yeah. Um, uh, some people uh, uh, have some digestion problem, for example. Yeah. And uh, not knowing why, suddenly they have digestion problem. And you know, a lot of people get on the phone and watch the phone and eat at the same time. So their mind is on the phone. Their mind is not on the saliva. Their mind is not on here. So they start burping and they start having some bloating, that kind of stuff. Our friends like that. So the first thing I ask them, how do you eat your lunch? You talk to your kids or you're watching the phone? Oh, I'm watching the phone. That's the only time I have. I have. I'm getting on Facebook. <laughs> you know, I say, how long have you been doing it? Oh, a long time. Six months? Yeah. And this happened six months ago? Yeah. Okay. I said, why don't you stop looking at the phone? Why don't you chew your food and mindfully enjoy the food? So if you enjoy the food, you start loving your body and see what happens. And the bloating is gone because your mind is not there. So just my opinion, if you do any kind of exercise, with your mind. I think the result that you get from your mind will be a lot better than not using your mind. You know? I mean, when you go to work, you use your mind. You have to. Otherwise, you'll be fired. You know? You use your mind and you watch it. You do your best at work so you get a raise in your salary or get a good, uh, what do you call it, uh, from your boss, you know? So the same thing with a human body. So when you do your Tai Chi freely, freely, just do it and flow without using your mind, relaxation, fine. You're just getting relaxation. Your organs are not worked on. But when you start using your mind, then it becomes difficult now. It becomes very stressful because you have to really watch the movement now. You have to calculate the movement, how much to turn, how much not to turn. So when that happen, it becomes stressful for your mind and become very irritated. But think about it. If you try it and you make a mistake, mistakes are meant to make. We make mistakes all the time in life. So you make the mistakes and you correct the mistakes. And when you correct the mistakes, you feel good. When you feel good, your mind feels good. Everybody feels good. Organs feel good. Ula, this is great. You're a nice guy. I love you. So the organs will love you. <laughs> okay? All right. Then some people say, well, why do I need to do movement? You know, why, why can't I just meditate or something? Well, that's fine. Something wrong with meditation. I think that's great. But to me, I would prefer Tai Chi because Tai Chi is already a form of meditation. Because you put your mind on it and you're moving. That's a meditation. Or you want to call it moving meditation. Okay? So, when you're moving, your mind is following it. There's two things you have to worry about. That becomes difficult. When you sit down and meditate, which is great because it relaxes the mind, you just empty your mind. Empty it so that you feel good. No, Tai Chi, we don't empty our mind. We focus on what we are doing. Therefore, we empty outside. Does it make sense? So we still empty our mind in a different way. We're not involved. We're not thinking of, of what well, I'm cooking tonight. Or who am I talking tomorrow? We're not thinking of that. We empty everything out. We focus fullness in our body. So our mind is focused fullness in our body how we execute in movement. Therefore, we're not emptying our mind in that way. Okay. And we have to time it. And the worst part is that while struggling to it, we have to enjoy it. 
that's not a, that's not easy, right? To enjoy it. Making all this mistake, look in the mirror, I'm so terrible, you know. How can you enjoy it, you know? It's okay, you make mistakes. So you learn as you go, as you go, you know. So, so in my opinion, you cannot just simply do Tai Chi. If we simply do it, just do it with no intention, no awareness, then this organ will simply function for you, in my opinion. If you do it with mindfulness, awareness, understanding the body mechanics of it, I think mindfully you're going to be strong, physically you're going to be strong, and you're going to get all this intrinsic value in your body called great things in your body. You get good chi. You know, they say chi, what is chi is energy. Uh, it's intrinsic energy, actually, that generated in our body. You know, through exercising. Of course, you can get all kind of chi anywhere. You can breathe the air, you get energy. You, do, you can go, get all that. You eat the food, you get energy. That's, that's a separate topic. You get food energy. But this is the mind and the body moving together, executing at the right time, at the right place, exactly with the same calculation to create this energy inside you. So if you have a good practice at home, sometimes you practice at home, sometimes you practice at home and you don't feel good about it because maybe your timing is off, maybe you have a bad day, maybe things are not working mentally and physically. But then there are other times you feel very good about it because everything is timed together. You know, so everything's time together. So when we practice the Tai Chi movement, we don't worry about what's outside. I told you, we empty our mind out of outside. We just focus on building this road, this journey. And we want to clean it all up. We don't care about, in our mind, we don't worry about what's outside because whatever outside is dirty, that's your problem. I want to make sure my path that I'm doing the form, the journey that I'm going through, is clean and it's clear. It's breathable. It's my space. So I'm fully concentrated on my journey. And of course, I will make a lot of mistakes in it. And the mistakes that I made, and if I knew the mistakes I made, I will fix it. So you do it every day that you've been practicing Tai Chi. So you will start seeing mistakes. Mistakes that you thought, oh, it was stupid of me when I turned this way. I should have turned that way. Then you'll fix it. And then after you practice for a while, you will go to another dimension or on the second floor. You're cleaning up on the first floor. And then you get good at it. You clean it all up, and then suddenly you see other mistakes, similar to the one you had before, but, but it's there. The reason why you see it, because you went to another dimension, or another level, on the second floor. See that? You went to the second floor. So second floor is dirty, so you have to clean it. You know? And then you turn for a while, you start seeing more things, because you're improving your life. It's like you got money, you get a job, you got promoted, you buy more things, and you, and you can afford to buy more things and buy more things and buy more things. So you keep getting an upgrade in your training over the years. Same goddamn form, you know, you're doing it. That's boring, you know. 108 moves, same form, you know. Why do we need to upgrade? Now I'm going to ask you a question. Why do you need an iPhone 12? When you need a higher iPhone, you can use an iPhone 4. It's old. Nobody want to use it. But Tai Chi is different. It's not like, oh, I want an iPhone 12. I don't want an iPhone 4. It doesn't work that way. You have to build it to get there. To get there. So you go to different upgrades as you go. So continuously you are training over the years. And enhancing your mind especially. This mind is very difficult to... Uh, I'm going to say it. It's very difficult to watch every little detail 
what we do every day. Generally, we get things done. Generally. But to get things done near 100% or close to 100%, we really need to have a very, very strong, a very, very focused, a very, very concentrated mind to get that. That's why you heard story about some masters are able to do exceptional tasks or things that they do is incredible. It's because they have reached that dimension to do it. And this is how you know yourself that you're improving. It's not a question of I'm a black belt, I'm a 10 degree black belt, or black sash, whatever. It's nothing to do with that. Well, if you want to say that, then it's upgrading or, or a way to show your progression. But over the years, you know, I mean, I'm training it every day. I'm still not satisfied with my training because I'm a different dimension of training. And I want to go more, you know. Uh, is there going to be a stopping point? Some people say yes, some people say no. I, I don't think it's yes for me because I don't think I can stop until I'm gone. <laughs> you know, hopefully I'm born again. That stupid guy continue <laughs> my journey, I hope, you know. So anyway, so um, what I'm trying to tell you is that when you do the movement, please put your mind into it while you're doing it because you can get a lot of benefits from it. And the mind is uh, very fast because if you close your eyes and think of San Francisco, you're there. That's how powerful the mind is, you know. But you have never been to San Francisco. You just think. But if you have been there, you journeyed there before, so you know how to get there. But you even know the detail how to get there because you went through it. Training is the same. So if you go through it, you will learn how to go to the next dimension. Okay. Another thing is that teaching also helps you. Because when you teach, you're teaching someone, you're going to show the person how to do the form. And that person is going to imitate you. They're going to take everything from you. So while you're teaching, you also see some of the mistakes they make. And that could be the mistakes that you're making that you are not aware of. So teaching is part of your learning. As you teach more and more people, you become more, uh, you will be more comprehend the art. You understand the art better. I mean, I've teached in many countries, so, and it's kind of weird that everybody asks questions differently, you know, and, uh, but it was a challenge for me because I cannot think my way or I cannot think the American way. This is how we teach, you have to follow. No, they, they have a different mindset. So uh, it taught me a lot how they think, you know. And then you teach people who are uh, very slow. How are you going to do it? So you have to break down the form to make it easier for them to learn and connect with them later. I always say to my instructor, when the students are bad, it's because the teachers are bad. So if you don't do good, I'm responsible, not you. You're innocent, you know. The day you're born, a doctor spank you and you cry. You're innocent. You know, and you come to this earth and you come to our school. So our job is to train you the best that we can be. If you don't do good, I blame my instructors. So, so just remember that. Or blame me. That means I'm blaming me. So uh, how can we train Tai Chi better than other exercises? First of all, in Tai Chi, First thing you need to do is to keep your body straight. When the body is straight, uh, there's several ways of defining what is straight. So let's just take a simple meaning. Keep your body straight and make sure your body is not arched. When the body is straight, everything is top down cylindrical like this. So if you just look at it like a cylinder, then everything can travel easily. When it's bent, it takes a longer time to travel. It's very simple as that. So in Tai Chi, the posture is very important. Not the relaxation. Relaxation is later. You need to do the posture first. You know, and how you move your posture. So the first thing in Tai Chi that you need to have is to keep your body straight. Now, how to keep your body straight? 
you know, our neck is arched in half our time, and this part here also arched in half our time. So we need to tuck our hip in, or tuck our buttock in, and keep the chin in, and relax the shoulder. And that's easy to say. That's easy to say. It's not, uh, no, 10 o'clock, let me know. 10 o'clock. Yeah. So it's not, it's, it's, it's easy to say. And, uh, but it's not easy to do. Because you have to be moving, and while you're moving, you're doing it. And you have to keep it mindfully all the time, this posture. Keeping your chin in, tucking. This is the two requirements in Wu Hao Tai Chi, at least. Wu Hao Tai Chi got 13 body methods. This first two is very important. This first two is they're always screwed up by many people. Some people uh, got so much intent into doing the art, they go flow like this, they go like this, they're enjoying themselves. That's enjoyment. That's not doing with body mechanics, okay? So the body mechanics are very, very important. The body methods are very, very important. So the chin in and the butt tucking, keeping the body straight is a very important thing. In the future, I'll talk about the 13 posture, the body methods in the future lecture. Uh, it's a whole topic. It will be like an hour and a half for, the, for, for that kind of lecture. So I just want to use a simple one, keeping a body straight. And I think I, sometime in class, I see people arch the back because they forgot. Sometimes it's habit. I have a bad habit. I tend to hunch a little bit. I didn't know it until I saw some of that photo. Because it's just you. It's just a habit. You know? So we need to change our habit. You'd be surprised that keeping a body straight changed a lot of things. When we were little, when I was a little, my dad would never let me hunch like this, eat my dinner like this. He would spank me, hit me. Hey, sit up straight. No talking while you're eating. So focus on your food. I never know why. I never see my brother all the time. I want to talk to my brother. No, you cannot talk. You eat your food and focus on eating your food. Keep your body straight. You know, that, that, that could be the reason. You know, so, so that's a good habit to build. But a lot of time we get on the computer, we arch our back and we forgot our postures all messed up. And then we start having problems. We start having spondylitis. Uh, we're having this and having that. We start having bone problem. We're having spinal cord problem. As we get older, because we build it over 10 years when we work in Texas Instrument, you know, something like that, a computer company that comes up. So, so you really have to keep your body straight while you do the Tai Chi form. And at the same time, using your mind, and your body to move together. Now, okay, great. I use my mind, I use my body together. So, so one is mental, one is physical. So when it matches, and you're doing all the requirement, what is Tai Chi? As I told you, you feel, you will feel a sense of belonging inside you, which I call this intrinsic Chi that you're gonna get, okay? You can call it spiritual if you want to, but non-religious wise, all right? Spirituality, because you feel peace, you feel silence, you feel good. So I don't know what else spiritual means, you know, but you're not related to any external forces. Remember, we are very selfish. We don't care what's outside. We only care what's inside. Why? Because we're cleaning up. We're cleaning all this dirt in our body. We're cleaning all this journey. We're cleaning up. So when we clean it all up, it's a beautiful place to be, to be in it. Why would I let somebody come in? Sorry. If Mike want it, well, do it yourself, right? <laughs> so I'm not going to give it to him, you know. So this is how we train Tai Chi. Once we are clean up, once we know that everything is good, everything is sort of near perfect in a way, or you went to that dimension, you develop the skill already by understanding all the stuff, which is good. You experience it, which is good. Then you know who you are. Then you can start knowing your enemy or your opponent, somebody outside you, because you know who you are. You are walking tall and standing tall. You know exactly who you are. You know how to handle it. Now you can deal with people. This is how you 
do the application of Tai Chi. You apply your Tai Chi to everyday life, to dealing with the salesman, to dealing with your boss, to handle your mother-in-law in a good way. So it's to say, you know, because she's the Tai Chi woman at home. Just joking. <laughs> so you are able to handle it. And so, because you know yourself, you know. So in our Tai Chi uh, study, sometimes we study Sun Tzu out of war. Sun, Sun Tzu out of war, the out of war. How to deal with your opponent, your enemy. Know yourself, know your enemy. Or know yourself, know your opponent. Tai Chi, we already practice knowing ourselves. Then we start knowing our opponent. How to handle the opponent, maybe to attack the opponent, but more to balance the opponent. To balance the opponent. Okay. So that go back to the question about Tai Chi. It's about balancing. About balancing the yin and the yang, the mind and the body, to gather this intrinsic energy to get absolute power inside you. That's what we want to do. And you will get optimum optimum health. Supposedly, you know. But of course, you have a pre-existing condition. That would be a different story. But at least it'll help you. I'm pretty sure it'll help. Uh, sometime you get a cancer, you get a cancer. There's nothing to do about it, you know. Uh, but maybe you do Tai Chi, you can prolong your life a little bit longer. You know. Uh, but you have to go, you have to go. But let me tell you that Tai Chi people will always die happy. <laughs> if you do it the right way, you know. So, I mean, you want to die unhappy? Come on, let's die happy. Right? We all die. There's nothing we can do about it. You know, we are born, we are dead anytime. So, like they said, enjoy every moment in your life. So why don't you enjoy Tai Chi and that moment of your life? If you do that, you get this intrinsic value inside you. When we watch a movie, you know, we, people love to watch movie. You have to focus on the movie, right? Otherwise, you don't know what's going on. You know? When you watch, uh, what's the name of the movie? That, uh, on the boat, and, and the, 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 the submarine, I mean, they sank. Yeah, Titanic. You see all the women cry. Some of the men cry too. Because they got emotionally involved with the movie, they're focusing on the movie. So they're watching it physically and they're emotionally involved and then they cry. That's a result. That's an intrinsic value. The crying is the intrinsic value they got. To me, that's how I look at it. So why don't you do the same thing for your body? Same thing. And when you do that, you're going to get something out of it. You know? Now, when we practice Tai Chi, uh, some of the body mechanics is like the knee. You know, a lot of people sometimes practice the Tai Chi Focusing on the hand and forget about the body, especially the knee. Because they're leaning forward. When they're leaning forward, sometimes they may have a knee problem or an ankle problem. So they try to accommodate it by doing that. So they're using this muscle. So that was wrong. You always have to open up your hip so that your knee aligns with the toe. I always mention that in class. So when you do that, you use very, you're using less effort on your thigh. You're using, you're using more the entire body that go to the ground. You know, so so you use the gravity from the ground, okay? So when we are performing Tai Chi, when we are moving with the Tai Chi, that ground is very important, or gravity, gravitational force. You know, a lot of time when we push our body, it's pushing from the ground, and this is the human body. You know, and then this is the sky up there, or the heaven. You know, you always heard about heaven, earth, and human. What is that? Uh, sometimes I say, oh, they're talking about Tai Chi. Maybe. They're actually talking about you. When you're standing on the ground, the sky up there, heaven up there, and then you are here. So heaven, earth, and human harmonize as one. Does that make sense? So we're always compressed by the, the earth and the sky or the heaven. And we are right in the middle, unfortunately. You know? And we've been compressed every day. So when we do Tai Chi, we keep it straight and strong. We are walking tall, standing tall, moving tall. So we didn't get compressed by this guy too much. You see that? So that's why a lot of people that don't practice Tai Chi, when they get old, they shrink because they've been compressed and they're not doing 
a posture that keeps the body straight all the time. I mean, how many of you sit, sit down all the time? It's always like this, watching, you know. If you go to a movie theater, you sit like this, people think you're weird. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> Something wrong with him. It's weird, man. You're supposed to relax, enjoy, you're supposed to hug your loved ones, you know. But you go like this. But if you do this all the time, it's good. In your work, in your daily life, and in Tai Chi, of course. And if you don't do it, do it at least in Tai Chi. Because that will benefit you, you know, in the long run. Do we have any questions here? No questions? Come on, I'm sure you have some questions. Yeah. Yeah. In Wuhao Tai Chi. Okay. So let's say in Wuhao Tai Chi, uh, one of our popular movement is Lazy to Tai Code, for example. So from Lazy to Tai Code, if I bring it down all the way, and I bring it up, and I push, and I bring it down, and I push, you see the difference? You don't see the difference. Watch it again. I'm going to charge you this time. <laughs> I'm going to stand on this side so you don't watch it. Same movement I'm executing. Same result. But different format, so as to say. Sit back. And I shift forward. Sit back, and I shift forward. Sit back, and I shift forward. Sit back, and I shift forward. You see the difference? You don't? Yeah. So the first one took a longer time, but to finish at the same time. The second one is a shorter one. They also finish at the same time. If you don't finish at the same time, what's going to happen? That means you're not harmonizing your move. You're not in sync with your move. You are separating your move. Say that. So there's a lot of calculation going on here. You need to calculate it to see how you do it. Okay. Hello, everybody. I hope you're still awake. And uh, please say hello to us uh, uh, if you have just logged in to see us. Okay. Yeah, you have a question. Oh. Big frame and a small frame. He call it. Yes, you can. Whatever you mix, whatever you mix, you're going to make sure you end it at the same time. That means, if you mix, that means, uh, you know, a large frame take a longer time, right? Small frame take a shorter time, correct? So, because small frame, I'm referring to Wuhao Tai Chi. I don't want to talk about other style yet. So, a small frame movement combined with a lot of large frame movement. Because small frame is a shorter time, large frame it's a bigger time. So you need to speed up the bigger time to match the smaller time. Then you match. Match means when the form ended the way it's supposed to be. That particular move. You gotta understand when we do Tai Chi, we go from one to two to three. Okay? From one, two, and three. So from one to two is one move. From two to three is another move. Okay? So this path, you have to calculate it. This path, you have to calculate it. Is there a stopping part? Yes, in the move. But when you stop, it connects right away. So basically, the movement is going through here. It go around here. 
and then go here. That's how we move in Wuhan. I think that's how Tai Chi moves the same that way. It's not like stop, 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 don't no, move that way. It's stop, it's circling around here, and then it go. It's the uh, interchange of the move. And usually the chain are so fast, and you're probably not aware of it. Uh, or the people are not aware of it watching it. So that question you asked, did I answer? Yeah, so basically. But of course, mind is involved. If your mind is unable to calculate that you're doing it, you'll be off. If you're off, fine. Do it better tomorrow, and good luck to you. <laughs> you know, do it better each day. Learn from the mistakes. You know, so everything is uh, time together. Let's say we asked uh, uh, Josh come up. Say, so let's say Josh, you're looking in the mirror. Now I want to show what time it is. Josh, lift your, lift your uh, right hand up. Show, show the mirror. Show the mirror. Stop. Come over there so you can show the mirror. So okay, put your hand down, and raise it up. So what Josh is doing? When he raises his hand, what happened? That crazy part of him also raises his hand. Now, who start first? Who start first? Come on. He start first. How do you know he start first? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Maybe the guy start first. You sure he start first? Now, who end first? He start first, right? Who end first? Who end it? End the movement? I don't think so. I think it's him. I think that's it. Because you know. You know because it's physically you see. But on the background, on the virtually, you don't know. You don't know who stuff was, who and was. You have no idea. But you do have an idea that they execute together, correct? Yes. 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 And what happened if he decided not to do it? So that means he's the master. <laughs> you see that? That means he's the master. He's the best. This one is not. He's, that one is the best. Because he decides everything based on what he's going to do. Yeah. So that's the mind. That's the yin part. That's the dark part that you don't see. This is a real part. This is a sun. That's the moon. You don't see. You see that? So, so mind and body have to work together. And he's using his mind and body. Whatever he does, that's what he'll do it. He doesn't do, he doesn't do. As the, the moment he intend to do, what happened to that person over there? He gets it. He gets the signal. He got his frequency. He's doing it. For sure he's doing it, right? I mean, he's the master. And this is what we are trying to attain. Sit down, thank you. This is what we are trying to attain, to understand how the mind works. And the mind is very powerful. That is the mind. You know, if you are able to use that mind effectively, you can do a lot of good things on this earth. But a lot of people don't use their mind. They think they use their mind. They fake their mind. They have fake news. So as to say, now this is fake news. They have fake information, you know. So talking about learning Tai Chi. Now, you can read about Tai Chi. You can learn knowledge from someone. You can read books. You can Google information. You got all this theory with you. But if you cannot put it together, then you're just spiritually playing your mind. You're not you're spiritually playing your mind. So the experience is very important. You have to get it. You know. So you get a PhD in something, or you can do anything. You should have experience to do it to get results. So a lot of people read a lot about touching. But they could never execute it correctly. So execution is important. That's that kind of thing. So yeah, it is.
So, is Tai Chi fast? Do you think Tai Chi is slow? I don't think so. Yeah. It's very fast. It is only slow physically. I just told you, when you raise the center, you raise the center. That's, that's lightning speed. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, can you change the mic again? I said audio is off. That's the, yeah. Oh, can you hear? Okay. Uh, hello, did anybody hear me? Can you hear me there? Oh yeah, that's good. All right, so anyway, so it's very fast. Tai Chi is very fast because of the mind, you know. The body can move slow. That's why we have to move slow to let the mind accommodate those movements. But sometimes it's so slow, it's very difficult to time it, right? When it's so difficult to time it, and if you time it, you think about it. Maybe you can walk on water someday. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you can levitate. I don't know. But if you are able to time it, you're a hero. You're the best. You are Tai Chi. Tai Chi means the best, the ultimate, the grand. Tai Chi Chuan means Tai Chi boxing. It's spelled as T A I C H I C H U N. It's spelled in America for many, 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 many years. So we use it in America. Uh, I think, I don't know how, who use it, but it's been used for a while. But I think in America we use it. Or maybe in England, I'm not sure. Maybe in Europe, I'm not sure. And then this is the correct spelling in the Chinese uh, alphabet uh, pinyin, Tai Ji Quan, uh, if you want, and that's the Chinese character for it. Okay? Any other questions? No. So anyway, what I'm trying to do now is to build, uh, I don't want to see traditional Tai Chi go away. That's my goal. Uh, I have many friends in China uh, in the 90s, was wondering why I spent so much time on Tai Chi stuff. Where I can be a very successful businessman <laughs> in China, because at that time, not many people speak English there. I get job offer, I get this, I get that to work for them, for their company. I never took it. I even offered to uh, do business with them. I never took it for a very, very low price in the 1990s, in the 90s. I never did. I spent all my time on this. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I don't regret doing it because it kept me feel good. I felt a lot of intrinsic value on this. So I'm building my wealth through health. Not the dollar bill. All the dollar bill is inside here. But a lot of people have the dollar bill here. They don't have here. So I like to put it in here. So, so that means I'm building up my retirement account good, you know. So, uh, so because I don't want to see this going away. Because this is passed from generation to generation. And to be honest with you, if we get cut off somewhere, that's a big loss. You know, things are there for a reason. Uh, whoever decides this, that's a reason. There's a reason why Michael Jackson lived in America. Why Michael Jackson is so popular? There's a reason. There's a reason for many things. For me, Tai Chi is one of the reasons. Regardless of what style you learn, you can have all the knowledge, all the books, all the best teachers, but if you cannot experience it, then you're just spiritually playing your mind that you think, oh man, I got it all, but you don't. So the experience of the art is very important. An experience can only come about when you understand the art fully and also to coach it to someone, teach it to someone. You know? And more importantly, an experienced teacher should pass the art to the next pe people, the next generation down, so that the art will stay forever until this earth is gone and it's not all over again. You know? While the earth is still here, these people have done their job. Why, why can't we do it? 
Okay. So that's why I want to start this uh, group uh, called Tai Chi Gang. We are a gang of people that will do something with the art and continue this le legacy for a long time. Uh, some people say, well, we don't know how long you're gonna be here and all that. I, I plan to live at least past 108 years old. So I'll be here for a long time. <laughs> so I hope. And uh, while you're here, just practice as much as you can. I'm not telling you to practice very seriously or religiously like me. No, you don't have to. Don't miss my class. <laughs> just come in here and that 45 minutes or an hour and a half or whichever class you take, take it seriously. Don't take it like a recreational because uh, you pay so much to come and learn. So take it seriously. Because if you take it seriously, your organs will love you. These organs are your angels. There's five angels in a body, which is the liver, the heart, the spleen, which is the stomach, the lungs and the kidney. These are the five primary organs in our body. Traditional Chinese medicine talk about this. The energies around how they work with each other help you to have, make you to have a good health. You know, they promote each other. So when there's a liver problem, there could be a heart problem. There could be a spleen problem. When there's a spleen problem, there could be a, a lung problem. Okay. Uh, I did a video on that explaining the, the five major organs which is also represent the five elements, you know, that the liver is a wood, the heart is a fire, the spleen is the uh, stomach, and the spleen is uh, earth, and the lungs is the metal, and the kidney is the water. These five elements work with each other. Traditional Chinese medicine is based on with the five elements. In Tai Chi, we have the eight gates, and five elements. The eight gates means the eight hand movement, and the five elements is the five leg movement. The eight hand hand movement is Peng Li Ji An Chai Lei Zhou Kao. That's in Chinese. Okay, I'll talk about it next time in the clock. And the five element is the front, back, left, and right, and the central equilibrium. So Tai Chi is based on that. So. Tai Chi is a very good art. It's formulated for us. You know, I mean, historically, it's been there for a long time. But the last 200 years, these people formulated, and it's a beautiful form. You start out off training a little bit. It's like a warm-up. And in the middle, you go through all these kicks and all that. You go down and up, and you're going crazy, getting some strenuous uh, movement, actually. And then towards the end, it comes down. So from nothing to something and back to nothing again. So it's formulated very nicely for you. That's why it's called Tai Chi Chuan. The supreme boxing, the ultimate, the best. What, what else can you have? Okay, all right, thank you very much. And uh, I hope you guys will uh, practice your Tai Chi diligently and uh, make it part of your life if you can. Uh, the best you can be. Thank you.